Mike's YouTube channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Jacob and I'll be leading some of your sessions over the next year. And today we're looking at miracles, specifically what's with miracles. Now, Jesus performed a lot of miracles in the Bible. Uh, we will dive into some of the major ones uh, later on. But we're not just going to look at what Jesus did. We're going to look at what other people did and how we can potentially pull off some miracles ourselves. Um, so, yeah, let's dive into some of the miracles that Jesus did. Let's go. The first of five miracles that I'm going to tell you about was when Jesus calmed the storm when the disciples and him were on a boat. Jesus and his disciples were on a boat and they were going off to do some fishing. Jesus was tired and having a sleep in the corner of the boat whilst this massive storm was going on. All of the waves were coming over the side of the boat and the water was going absolutely everywhere. It looked like they were going to sink. But he said to his disciples, calm down. It's just a storm. But I can't remember the exact words, but that's pretty much what he said. And then Jesus stood up and said, calm to the storm. And the storm stopped. In turn, saving his disciples' lives, calming them down. And the storm just disappeared. What an amazing miracle that Jesus performed there. The second miracle I'm going to tell you about was when Jesus opened the eyes of two blind men. As he was leaving a large crowd of people that he just taught the message to, um, two of them called out and said, have mercy on us, son of David. When they eventually followed him aside, Jesus asked them, do you have faith that I can heal you? Uh, and they said, yes, we do. So then he touched their eyes and their sight was restored. Now, how crazy is that? A blind person with no medical help, just Jesus, Holy Spirit, in their eyes, and they were able to see again. So those two men got up and spread his news around the nation. So his third miracle is a miracle you might know quite well. It's the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus was teaching in a remote village, and his disciples said to him, it's time to stop teaching and send these people home. They need their dinner. But Jesus said, no, we're not going to send them home. You feed them. The disciples said back to them, we don't have any food to give um, to the 5,000 people that are here. So Jesus called out to the crowd and said, does anybody have any food that we could share? This boy got up and gave him five loaves and two fishes that his mother had packed for him in the morning before he went to go see Jesus. Jesus prayed over this uh, bread and wine, not bread and wine, bread and fish. And miraculously, it all spread around, all 5,000 with two baskets or three baskets to spare. Amazing, brilliant and a real good miracle. The fourth miracle I want to tell you about is when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was a great friend of all the disciples and even Jesus' mother. And at the time, they were all really sad about the death of this man. Jesus demanded that because Lazarus was in a tomb, uh, that the stone would be rolled away. And after a bit of argument, he got his way, as he always did. He was led into the tomb and he said to Lazarus a couple of simple things. In the name of the Lord get up and he rose he got out he took his took his grave clothes off and he left the tomb like how mad is that jesus raised lazarus from the dead absolute mind blowing the man was dead on to the fifth the fifth and final miracle i want to tell you about in this video is when Jesus caught lots of fish. Yeah, you heard that right. But don't forget, we have so many more miracles that Jesus did. But we just can't cover them in this video. So please do look them up if you have a bit of spare time. But anyway, this fish one. 
One day, Jesus was teaching by the lake. A lake in Galilee, I think it was. And he was with a crowd. And all his disciples had just come in from the nighttime fishing. And so nighttime is a prime time to do your fishing. Uh, and they caught absolute no fish at all. And I can see you probably already can understand where this story is going. Jesus said to the crowd, look what I can do. He said to his disciples, go out to the centre of the lake. Put your nets down. And when I say, pull them up. They decline. They argue. They said, no, we've just done that all night. How, why would it be any different now? As, as you would normally think. And that's what they did. They went, but yeah, eventually that's what they did. Went to spot around the lake. They put the nets down. And when they pulled the nets up, there were so many fish that the ship started to sink. Luckily, it didn't sink. But just amazing how one moment without Jesus' faith, there was no fish. But now, with Jesus praying over it, another miracle and the fish arrived and in great force. So you might be thinking, Jesus can perform these miracles, but how can I perform these miracles? Jesus obviously was all powerful and all loving and he managed to do it because he had the power to. But how can we, everyday people and other people around the world perform said miracles? I believe there is four points and four things you need to have before you can perform any sort of miracle. And trust me, it is doable. The first one is inspiration. You need to be inspired by what Jesus' miracles did and what other people's miracles did. Now it's hard, there's loads of miracles to, to, for you to look at. Uh, so speak to one of the youth team if you want some good books on miracles or good films or videos. I've got, I've got plenty of suggestions that I can give you. Um, so speak to us or uh, drop us a message in the WhatsApp group if you want a suggestion of some good miracles. Um, and there's also Google. Um, go on a little Google, search for some miracles. And I'm sure plenty will come up. I'm going to tell you now about something that convinced me that miracles can happen and inspired me to, to try miracles myself. I was at a holiday Bible camp uh, a couple of years ago and um, some of my friends were very inspired to perform their own miracles. So they were determined to find somebody who needed prayer and needed a miracle. So they found one of my other friends um, who had had a struggling to walk, run, uh, do any physical exercise um, for, for a whole week because uh, of a knee problem they had. So they took this guy outside uh, and they and they prayed. They prayed for him. I didn't take part of the praying. I didn't believe it was going to happen. But I watched over them and I saw what happened. And from then on, that was my inspiration to carry on and to try and perform miracles myself. The second thing you need to have is the Holy Spirit. If you invite the Holy Spirit down into you to perform this miracle then it will help out your miracle a lot. Because ultimately, it's not you performing the miracle. It's the Holy Spirit and God who's doing it. It's just through you. Now, this leads me into my next point. Is number three. If you don't believe that the Holy Spirit's coming through you into somebody else to heal them, then that's also your miracle might not work. Now, this is probably one of the most important points. You have to believe that a miracle is going to happen. If you go into a situation thinking, I don't think that he'll get healed, or I don't think that he'll magically raise from the dead, then there's no point. There's not much point in you performing that miracle. My fourth and final point is you have to have patience. As you may know already about prayer, it doesn't always work the first time of asking. It's actually said in the Bible that even though Jesus performed those miracles we talked about, talked about earlier, that he didn't just pray once for that miracle to happen. He prayed around two to three 
in even more times for those miracles to happen. So, when you're sitting there and you're trying to perform a miracle, you can't just say one prayer and expect it to happen. You have to persevere. You have to have patience. And you have to let God do his work. So I hope you learned something from this session. Uh, the four things that I think you need to have to perform a miracle is number one, inspiration. Number two, the Holy Spirit. Number three, one of the most important ones, belief. Another one, another really important one. Number four, patience. If you have all four of those things when going into a situation when you want to perform a miracle, then you're well on your way. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you're staying safe and I hope to see you all soon.